So after spending what feels like ages inside the Blender modeling the perfect scene, you are finally able to hit that render button. But then your render comes out looking like this. And you are sitting there wondering to yourself how to make Eevee look better. Because this is not good and you want an effect like this. In under 10 minutes, I'll show you how to take your EV rendering skills to the next level. So let's get into it. Volumetrics. Volumetrics are an easy way to get in some detail. So cover your scene with a cube, make sure it covers your entire scene. And let's add in a volumetric material to that cube by removing the default surface material and adding one, a principled volume to the volume. Now set the density to a very low number and this will add some atmosphere to any scene in Eevee. Just change the density to fit your scene. World Properties In the World Properties you can change the color of your scene world. You can also add in HDRI if that better fits your scene. In this case I am using a quarter scene so there's no use for an HDRI. But I will change the color to a bluish tint to get that bluish effect already going in my scene. Make sure to use a color, strength or an HDRI which fits your scene perfectly. Post-processing effects. Blender comes with some great built-in post-processing effects. I will enable ambient inclusion which will generate shadows in areas where light isn't supposed to be. I will enable bloom as well to generate a nice hazy effect around any lights in our scene. Screen space reflections is a very important one which will generate reflections on reflective materials. Reflections are very important for realism. Pay special attention to the floor and the pipes on the ceiling to see what it really does. If your scene is animated, make sure to enable motion blur. And in the volumetrics tab, let's set the tile size to 2, crank up the samples and enable volumetric shadows for good looking volumetric effects. Finally, make sure to crank up the contrast in color management. Indirect lighting. One of the biggest difference between EV and cycles is indirect lighting. But we can bake indirect lighting in EV. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, let's add in a reflection cube map and scale this up so it covers our entire scene or any part of your scene that you want reflective materials to work properly on. You can tweak the settings in the object data properties. However, for this particular scene, the default settings are fine. Now let's add in a irradiance volume. Scale up the irradiance volume to cover your entire scene as well or any part where you want proper lighting. Now let's go into the object data properties and increase the resolution so you get an even spread with a decent amount of dots across the object. Increasing the resolution will increase the bake time so try to find a balance between resolution and bake time to get the perfect result for your scene. As you can tell I used a resolution to optimize the bake time but also get a nice decent amount of detail and lighting data in my irradiance volume. Now if we go into the render properties we can go down to indirect lighting and hit bake indirect lighting to bake our entire scene. Feel free to change the cube map size or any of the other settings to increase the effect. However this will also increase baking time. Now as you can tell we got some very nice reflections going now after baking and especially on the floor and on the side panels, you can see we have really nice lighting and really nice reflections, making everything look way more realistic than before. You might have noticed that in most video games, lighting looks kind of similar, and that's because most video games use pre-baked lighting and reflections as well to speed up rendering times and enable higher FPS. Now finally, let's go into the few layer properties and enable the mist, shadow and ambient occlusion render passes so we can take them into compositing. Oh snap, my render turned out quite different than what I expected. However, now we're on the subject, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Compositing. With our render done, we can go into compositing and really take it to the next level. Make sure use nodes is selected and let's add our first node which is a color balance. Now you want to tweak the gamma, lift and power until you get a result which you really like. In my case I made the scene a bit darker, cranked up all the blue values by putting the color wheels into the blue spectrum and changing all of the black and white sliders until I thought it looked good. Now next up I want to add in three color ramps and use these with the mist pass, the shadow pass and the AO pass that we enabled in the view layer properties. Now if I shift click on this color ramp you can see what the mist pass does. Effectively we will use this as a vignette to focus more on the door side of the hallway. Now by 
dragging these sliders in and out, I can tweak the mist pass, making it stronger, and I like this. Now, for the shadow pass, let's do something similar. These are the shadows in our scene. I'm just gonna crank up the shadows, making them darker and more contrast. Third, let's do that with the AO. This is all the ambient occlusion in our scene, and I just wanna crank this dark value up a bit more, making our AO stronger. We wanna combine these three color masks, if you will, with our main render. So let's add in three mixed RGB nodes, or mixed nodes, I guess they are called, in the compositor. And let's set all three of these to multiply it first. Now let's plug in our mist pass first on the uh, first mix node, and you will get this. It's way strong, but we can easily tune this down by decreasing the factor to something like a 0.25. Now let's also do this with our shadow pass. And let's set this one from multiply to overlay instead. And I'm also going to decrease the factor, which I'll put at 0.25 again. With the node selected, you can hit M to mute the node and see the effect before and after. And I think this is fine for our scene here. Lastly, let's take our ambient occlusion pass and plug it into the final mix node. Now this is also very strong, however it's also kind of nice. Um, I am going to leave this at multiply, but I'm going to decrease the factor to 0.25 as well. Again, by muting the node, we can see if we like the effect. Now, finally, let's add in a RGB curves node and set it to film like. Then get this very bland S shape going. So drag the bottom down and pull the top up, which will give us more contrast again. Now, let's add in a lens distortion node and set the distortion to 0.05 and the dispersion to 0.01. Now, I do think the distortion is actually a bit much, so I'm just going to take it down to 0.01 as well. Now, also, I want to hit the fit button to make sure that the edges do not get strange artifacts by the distortion. Now, you want to change all of these settings until they fit your scene perfectly, and I'm going to change mine to make it a bit more blue. However, this setup will provide a nice compositing for almost any scene as a base setup. Now, you know what we do next. We hit that render animation button and it will take us to the final result. I think it's way better, it's way more realistic and especially the reflections and the lighting is uh, way nicer. Here's a before and after shot so you can uh, compare them easily. Uh, I think it's a big improvement. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Please leave a like, subscribe and comment down below. See you in the next one.